It's book haul time! Ah, ah. Not already! And before you come with the judgment, yes, I bought more books. Mm -hmm. Mind your business. Mm -hmm. Keep those judgy thoughts to yourself. Mm -hmm. This is a safe space for people who have a book buying problem. Is it a safe space? It might be a bad space because all we do is enable each other. Um, but anyway, it's time for a book haul, y'all. And today's video is being sponsored by Disney Book Group. I've got a variety of books to share with you today. So grab some coffee, grab some tea, grab a snack, let's talk some smack. I was just trying to rhyme. It's book haul time! First up here, we've got The Rumor Game by Danielle Clayton and Sona Cherapatra. This is the book explosion book of the month for the month of March. Can we believe it's March? I hate with the fiery burning passion inside how short February is. Like the audacity. Are you joking February? It's literally what I call a blink month. You blink and poof, it's gone. This book takes place at Foxham Prep, which is a super posh private school for the children of DC's elite. When a rumor pops up here, it bounces off the walls of the halls, entering students' ears, exiting their mouths, and eventually it could ruin a student's life. Why did I feel the need to put a that way. That's such a dramatic way to say that like rumors can spread and ruin a person's life. I guess I was really trying to paint the picture of a rumor mill for you. I hope it worked. This story surrounds three girls. We've got Bryn, we've got Georgie, and we've got Cora. Bryn used to have it all and then a rumor took away everything. Cora is the cheer captain which comes with lots of popularity. And in walks Georgie, who after a summer makeover is now the It Girl, which inevitably causes a feud between Cora and Georgie. Rumors are both making and breaking these girls, and one person has the power to put a stop to it all. Like full on stop sign, red light, no more. But the question is, do they really want the rumors to stop? If you're new here, hello, I love books that bring forth drama. I ain't saving the drama for my mama, I'm saving it for me, myself, and I. I love books like this, so I just know it's gonna be so much fun to devour it. This is the author duo that brought us Tiny Pretty Things, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring forth with this book. What are they going to bring to the table for us this time? I'm ready for my book meal. Speaking of Tiny Pretty Things, did any of you watch the Tiny Pretty Things Netflix show? Let me know in the comments down below. The rumor game kind of has that dark academia vibe going for it. It's giving Pretty Little Liars meets Gossip Girl, and I am absolutely positively here for that. I feel like there's going to be a lot of great commentary on rumors in high school with this book. I think that's a topic that should be explored more. Rumors in high school can be ruthless, like literally ruthless. People can be so mean. And for what? I often think back on my high school experience and think about how mean people were and I'm just like, were y'all okay? I think a lot of people will be able to connect to a book like this because of that. I know when I was in high school there were constant rumors being spread left and right. It felt like more times than not the rumors were all lies. I feel like we had some really bizarre rumors spread too. <clears throat> anyway, I'm looking forward to discussing this with the Booksplosion crew, which I feel like I haven't talked about Booksplosion in a second, so let me fill you in on Booksplosion. It's a book club I run alongside Christine from Pull and Bananas Books and Kat from Caddy each month, we pick a book, read it, and have a live show discussion on our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash booksplosion. This month, we're discussing the rumor game, and our live show will be on April 2nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if this book sounds good to you, be sure to pick it up. I will leave a link to where you can get it down below in the description, and join us for the discussion. I feel like this one has the potential to provide a solid discussion, so I'm looking forward to talking about it. Next up, I got The Catcher in the Rye. I feel like this seems so random. Fun fact, I once owned this book, then I unhauled it, and now I own it again. I announced a classics book club at the beginning of the year and I still want to do it. Don't get it twisted. I'm just still figuring out how I want to go about it and I was supposed to launch in January but as things go with me I'm a mess and it's been postponed. This story is about a boy named Holden and he's a bad boy. He's getting expelled from school all the time and he may be young but he's trying to live his life in adult shoes and we follow him on his journey of figuring himself out. That's all I really know about this book. I'm really surprised I've never been spoiled for this book like I don't know really anything that happens in this book but I feel like it's a book that's talked about a lot and I'm just surprised that I've like not picked up on any spoilers over the years. Now that does not mean to spoil me in the comments. Please don't do that. Please don't ruin it for me. I do know that it's one of those books that are on lists like the most hated classic to ever exist. My eyeballs bled whenever I read these books. I'd rather eat gravel than touch these books ever again. But honestly, that has me intrigued. I gotta know why it's so controversial. Next up, I picked up Foolish Hearts. From what I gather, this book follows a girl who overhears the breakup between like the it couple in the school. And our main character ends up being cast in the school play and the boy from the it couple ends up being cast as well and their chemistry like strongly brings them together. That's honestly all I know about this book. The description tells me next to nothing. But I've read a book by this author in the past. That being This Adventure Ends and I loved it and I've been wanting to pick up more of her books which is how I ended up here with this in my hands. I just have to say one thing though. I absolutely hate this cover. They did the author dirty with this one. I feel like it's one of my ditch chart projects from school that they picked up from the trash. I recognize that that was harsh but I love pretty book covers and this ain't pretty. I bought this book at a used bookstore and it's actually 
missing an Owl Crate edition. Like, there's a letter from the Owl Crate box. Love finding gems in used bookstores. I feel like this author is pretty underrated, and I hope this book matches my level of love that I had for this adventure ends. Next up, I picked up Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This book is about a group of people who end up being taken hostage during an apartment viewing, and as time passes, the eight strangers connect over different aspects of their lives. I've read one book by Frederick Bachman in my life, and that is a man called Uwe, but that book stuck with me. Like, the author put super glue all over those words, and I can't seem to get the words unstuck from my soul. But I'm okay with that. I'm hoping this one has just as much of an impact as that one did on me. The expectations are high, though. I think I'm gonna talk about the next two together, even though they have nothing to do with each other. I got two finales. First up, The Winter of the Witch, and Finale. There's something really powerful about the last book in a trilogy just being named Finale. That was a power move, Stephanie Garber. The Winter of the Witch is the finale of the Winter Nights trilogy, and Finale is the finale of the Caraval trilogy. These are both series where I'm nowhere near needing the final books, and yet I decided that I need to pick them up. I can't even begin to explain myself because I do not have a solid reason as to why I picked these up. A part of me is like, maybe picking up the last book in a trilogy will push me to read the trilogies. But is that likely? Not at all. I also always just have this weird fear that like certain books are going to go out of print. So that's the best explanation I have here. <laughs> Next up, I got Light from Uncommon Stars. Can we take a second to appreciate this book cover? Because I think it is beautiful. I feel like I've been eyeing this book for so long too, and to finally have it just feels so good. But do you want to know what the selling point was for this book? Even if you don't want to know, I'm going to tell you. It was literally this one line in the description. Suzuka Satomi made a deal with the devil. To escape damnation, she must entice seven other violin prodigies to trade their souls for success. She has already delivered six. I'm intrigued! Oh, you can see my blanket. Yes, I'm wearing a blanket. I'm cold. Does that not sound good? That sounds amazing, right? <laughs> what more can I want? That's all I want. Say no more. I have been intrigued. This book knew how to hook me. It threw that hook in my direction and hooked I have been. It's not hard these days to get me, apparently. I tried to play hard to get, but it's clearly not working. Whoever wrote that line, I'm assuming it's the author, knew what they were doing. I applaud them. Book applaud them. Next up, I got Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. This follows Wee Wu Shan, who is granted a second chance at life. In his first life, he had gained powers that people feared, and his death was celebrated. But he's back now in somebody else's body, and he is looking to get revenge. This was one of those situations where it had a beautiful display table in Barnes & Noble, and I got got it. Those tables never really influence me. I'm always like, meh. I could do better than that. But this one was beautiful, and it called out to me, and oops, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Next up, I got an arc of my friend Robbie's debut book. If you change your mind, I always get way too excited when my friend's books show up. I'm so proud. In this book, we follow Harry, who is an aspiring screenwriter, and he's working to get into the school of his dreams. And that means dropping all distractions and focusing entirely on writing. But when his ex, Grant, comes to town with a secret that could throw him off track, and a new boy named Logan piques his interest, all focus is out the window. I feel like this is going to be the perfect big summary contemporary story and I can't wait to read it. If You Change Your Mind comes out May 3rd, 2022. And finally today I have the Illumicrate box for February so we're gonna open it up, see all the bookish goodness that's inside, and I feel like this is the first time in a long while where I've been on track with Illumicrate unboxings. Go me! I deserve an award! What should my award be? A new book? Yeah! I do not have a problem. The theme for February's box is bad blood and my inner Swifty is really holding back right now. Don't let it slip! Don't let it come out! Don't do it! Don't do it! Cause maybe not we got bad blood! First thing I'm seeing is this box. Let's open it. We got a Tumblr. I love Tumblrs. Speaking of Tumblr, I miss the days of Tumblr. Those were the good days. Just sit on your butt, reblog things, enjoy life. What a time. Now everybody's just mad on Twitter. This Tumblr is inspired by the book A Memory Called Empire, which I've actually never heard of that book, but I'm intrigued. Here's a little design on the Tumblr, and I'm looking forward to sipping all my iced coffee from this Tumblr. I'm supposed to clean that before I suck it. Clean your tumblers before you do some sucking. Wise words from Jesse the Reader. Next up, I'm seeing this little box. Ooh, that's freaking dope, man. Holy crap. Look at the art on this plate. It's a little Illumicrate plate, and it's got Medusa on it. The cheat sheet is calling this a Medusa shield trinket tray. Protect your trinkets with this ceramic dish inspired by lore. Ah, lore by Alexander Bracken. I really enjoyed that book. This is really cool. I'm into it. I also match it because I'm wearing green. Should I just, like, tape this right here and just wear it? I could, like, put it on a necklace and be like, bling, bling. I can already sense the comments that are screaming, no, absolutely not. And you know what? I'd have to agree with you. Next up, I'm seeing this, which appears to be a little pouch situation, a little zipper pouch. Here it is up close, and it says on it, if longing is madness, then none of us are sane. Touche. The cheat sheet says this is inspired by The Crier's War, a book that I have on my shelf. I need to freaking read. I've heard so many great things about that book. So many great things about that. Is it a duology? I think it might be a duology. 
My mind is telling me yes. I'll Google it later. I love me a little bookish pouch moment though, especially when I'm traveling. I can throw my needs in here, throw my goodies in here. Does anybody else just think the sound of a zipper is just so satisfying? Like, whew. <laughs> I'll stop, I promise. This is getting weird. Next up, I'm seeing this. My voice just went up. It went really high. Ooh, butterflies dust. Bath fizzer. It's been a minute since I've taken a bath and that's because I'm a shower boy. I promise I'm clean. I smell good too. I, I wish you could sniff me. Ooh, it smells yummy. It is sweet orange fragrance. I can definitely smell the orange, the citrus. The goodness. <laughs> it's inspired by the poison Yelena is given by Valak in Poison Study. What? That's kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie that they made a, a bath bomb inspired by the poison somebody was given. I'm here for it. Next up, I'm seeing this little pouch. It's so small and cute. Ooh, we haven't had these in a while. We've got their coin magnets. I feel like I know these characters even though I haven't read this book. Like I'm pretty sure this is red, white, and royal blue. I mean, here's the designs up close. Here are the character designs. And I think it's pretty evident that it's from that book, which is really cool. I was right. It's Alex and Henry magnets from red, white, and royal blue. I have missed them doing these little magnet coins. I have some on my fridge currently with iconic characters like Kaz Brecker, so I'm excited to add these to my fridge. Finally, inside the box, we have the book of the month, my favorite part. Illumicrate has literally been killing it with their additions lately, so I'm excited to see what they did this month. Watcha, watcha. The book is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Let's immediately dive into the aesthetics. We've got the cover here, which has some nice gold detailing. We've got the spine, more gold detailing. I'm here for the gold. And then on the back, again, more gold detailing. Then we've got these beautiful sprayed edges. We've got some floral on the side and then red on the top and bottom. We've got these beautiful in pages, which is art inspired by the book. Here is the book with the dust jacket removed and it is stunning. This actually reminds me of like the Penguin Classic Editions, which I really like that. And then finally, the book is signed by the author. Another freaking beautiful book from Illumicrate. Oh my gosh. Way too good. I feel like I just always gush about Illumicrate's editions, but like who's doing it like a Lumicrate. Nobody! Let's talk a little bit about A River Enchanted. The back of the book says your presence is required at once for urgent business. Please return to Cadence with your harp upon receipt. Essentially this book is an adult fantasy and we are following Jack who is making his way back to Cadence Island. It's been 10 years and he's excited at the chance to study music in Cadence. But when girls begin to go missing, Jack is summoned to help find them. I'm not 100% sure on this but I think his harp has like magical abilities and he uses his harp to help find the girls but I could be wrong. I obviously have not not read the book. That's kind of what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that music and magic work together in this book. I would love to see that happen, but I will keep you guys updated on my thoughts when I get around to reading this one. This is another amazing Illumicrate box. I will leave more information on Illumicrate down below in the description. I love their service and I can't recommend them enough and you can use my code JESSE to get a bit of a discount. Those were all the books that I picked up in the month of February. I know that you're seeing this in March, but these are the books that I got in February. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. And if you haven't read any of them, just let me know down below in the comments some books that you have picked up recently. Let me know down below in the comments some books that you bought in the month of February, or even books you checked out from the library. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye yo! This book takes place at this box home prep, box ham press, box ham press, prep. This book takes place at box ham prep. Next up, I picked up Anxious People by Frederick Back. I'm hoping, praying, screaming, crying, throwing up. What? <laughs>